Welcome to the Allison on Badass Show, a podcast to help women discover and rediscover their confidence and style. I'm Allison on Badass, and I'm so glad to have you joining me today. On this episode, I'm being joined by my business manager, podcast co-producer, and friend, Lauren Smith. Lauren is my right hand here at Outfit Formulas, and I don't know what I'd do without her. Honestly, one of the reasons I was so thrilled to do a podcast was so I could introduce you to her. She is one of the best women I know, and I've known Lauren for seven years. We actually first connected when she became a member of my style program, Outfit Formulas, back in the winter of 2016. We chatted via DM shortly after she joined, and the following spring, she joined my team. It was one of those situations where I told my husband, I must work with this woman. And as they say, the rest is history. I am super excited for her to share her style story on today's episode and delighted to let you know that this will not be the last time you'll hear Lauren and I chat. She'll be a regular voice on the show in future episodes as well. Lauren's style story includes growing up with limited clothing options, the realization that her bargain shopping ways were not paying off, and the discoveries she's been making about her style lately. As always, I have the deepest respect and appreciation for those who are brave enough to share their style stories. I ask that you hold space for vulnerability and show kindness to every guest of the show. My hope is that these stories will inspire you to consider your own style story. And if you haven't subscribed to the show yet, please take a moment to do it now. I've got an incredible lineup of episodes for you in the coming weeks, and I don't want you to miss a thing. All right, now let's get to the show. Hey, Lauren, welcome back to the show. I'm so excited to have you. Thank you, Allison. I am so glad to be here. I am excited to share my style story. I was so inspired after hearing yours, and I hope to do the same for our listeners today. Well, this is a dream come true. I'm, I'm going to say it again. I said it the, the first episode that we did, but I just love that we're able to get together and have these chats. What you don't know is that Lauren and I have these chats like on a weekly basis in real life. So just being able to share our style stories here is is super cool. So I'm excited to dive into it today. Absolutely. I couldn't agree agree more. I think about I think one of the things I'm most excited about with this podcast is, you know, people get to see social media, Allison and like Outfit Formula CEO, Allison and You are the same person, but I know a different side of you. And um, when we chat in our, you know, in our weekly meetings, like there's there's a different you that I am excited for the rest of the world to get to know as well. So I'm really excited for that. Well, likewise, I can't wait for them to learn more about you and your style story. I know a little bit about it, but really just looking forward to diving in to all the good stuff today. Absolutely. Well, before we do start, uh, I do want to offer a quick body image content warning. Um, If you do not have capacity for a conversation that involves discussions of weight, uh, please take care of yourself and skip today's episode. We will be back in your podcast feed next week with a new episode and uh, do what you need to do to look after yourself. I love that. Thank you. Of course. So we all have our style role models, and I would love to hear about some of the women that really just influenced you growing up and, well, spoiler alert, but maybe some of the men too. Ooh. Who did you look up to? What a teaser. Okay. So uh, I love this question. And honestly, I was surprised about who came to mind when I started thinking about this. Uh, The first person that came to my mind was my aunt. Uh, I was, I don't know, I'm going to say she was probably in her 20s when I was born, And I just thought she was like the coolest woman on the face of the earth. I followed her around like a little puppy at every family gathering. I'm sure she was annoyed to heck of me. (laughs) I always admired her. Um, I loved her kind of boho edgy style. She really came of age in the 80s and I know was like part of the music scene and kind of the punk rock scene as well. Um, She had long, dark hair, which like I have long dark hair, so clearly this is an influence on me. Um, she was always wearing these beautiful printed dresses. I just, like, she looked like a goddess to me. And so she was definitely one of my style inspirations, uh, role model growing up. Um, another one that comes to mind is a lady who went to my church when I was growing up. Uh, she had, she always wore, like, the most unique luxurious looking shoes. They were 
unlike anything I saw any other woman wearing, they were these bright, bold colors. There's this really like lime green kind of color pair that that's coming to mind for me. Um, but always like these like leather and suede and just really feel, I think she was European. So I'm, I'm guessing that that may be where some of her style influences came from. Um, but just, again, it was like nobody else at church has shoes like this. So every week when I would go and be like, what is she wearing today? I need to see. Um, and, and again, in reflecting and preparing for today, I was also re- remembering like, oh, she also had, you know, white, like pure white gray hair. And I can't help but wonder now, like, did that impact me embracing my grays when I was in my 30s too? So um, those are the first couple that came to mind that kind of honestly were a little bit unexpected for me. I think like most women, my mother was one of my style role models growing up. Uh, she, you know, she stayed home and did like the home daycare thing when we were young. But once I was in school full time, she really stepped into her career woman role and always, you know, beautiful makeup. Um, to this day, the woman rolls out of bed and immediately goes for lipstick and coffee within the first five minutes of waking up. And she, you know, had this movie star hair. I think of, I just picture like these rolling, cur- I think the hot rollers were the thing back in that day. So the hot rollers with these beautiful waving curls and that, I don't know, 80s, 90s, I, we always call it the bang poof, uh, where you like, curl blow dry the fir- like half of your bangs down and then the back I've seen your photos I know you know what I'm talking about <laughs> oh yes <laughs> the teased up yeah the aquanet oh yes exactly <laughs> so my mother like she rocked that bang poof she taught me my love and fondness for a good hairspray and then in terms of my mom's clothing there was this MLM brand company in Canada I don't think it was in the U.S. at all but it was called Weekenders Clothing Um, and they were these collections of mix and match pieces so tops bottoms layers Um, and it was just like Tupperware like you'd go to these house parties and all these women you know sit around and sip your tea and try on clothes and they had accessories and the whole bit but she always loved those outfits they were really easy for her to pair up. So again, I think even, you know, back then, like women are, are looking for those, give us those done for you solutions, eliminate the decision. She knew that all of those pieces would pair together nicely. They were easy to wash. They looked good. They were comfortable. She just always looked very put together. So she was definitely one of my style role models. And then my last one, which again, kind of surprised me as I was thinking about it, but my dad was one of my style role models. You know, he's always um, really been intentional and looked after his appearance really well. He's, you know, always got a clean shaven face. Uh, He's a pretty dapper guy, in my opinion, and is incredibly handsome in a suit. Um, And he and I also share a love of good shoes. So um, it's not uncommon for us to shoot messages back and forth. I'll be like, hey, dad, I saw these shoes. Aren't they incredible? And, you know, we have a a shared affinity for an appreciation of a nice shoe. (laughs) Uh, I love that. I love that your dad was a style influence because he was one of our models for the Alpha Formulas menswear capsule. So I can definitely attest to the fact that you have one dapper dad. (laughs) (laughs) And, and I loved, I loved hearing these stories about your aunt and the lady at church too, because I can see this so clearly in your style. You, you have that boho edgy vibe. And then also the elements that you pulled from from the lady at church too, and the cool shoes, this like the statement shoes. Wow, that's so cool. So thinking back on your style story around age nine or 10, how do you feel that Lauren was feeling about her clothes and appearance around that time in your life? Yeah, um, you know, this one, this is where things get a little sensitive for me. And I think around that age was when I started to realize that my body didn't look like everyone else's. Um, you know, I, one of my, my memories is being in third grade and we were in math class and they were teaching us, they were teaching us how to draw charts and graphs. And the exercise for the class to do was to, um, they, we went around and they measured everyone's height and they, they put everyone on a scale and they measured everyone's weight. And so we were supposed to take our measurements and put them into a chart or graph or whatever. And I didn't think anything of it. And the teacher kind of quietly came around to me and she kind of whispered to me and she said, you know, Lauren, you don't have to put your weight on your chart if you don't want to. And like, it had never occurred to me not to, 
<laughs> until she said those words to me. I didn't, um, I didn't, I didn't realize that that was something that I should feel ashamed of or embarrassed about. And I kind of, okay. Um, and I, I put my weight on the chart anyways, cause I didn't, I don't know. I didn't know any better. I didn't know that I shouldn't. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just, you know, I remember I, I, like later that same year sitting, cir- you know, circle time on the floor. Right. And you're all sitting around side by side And I remember like looking down at my legs and seeing my thighs and noticing that the girl beside me, her thighs were like so much tinier than mine. So in terms of the timing of this, like this was the early 90s. Uh, Clothing options for plus size in Canada have never been good. (laughs) Uh, But especially back then, like they barely existed, let alone for kids. Uh, Walmart finally opened here in the mid 90s, which everyone was super excited about. But even then, the only jeans that would fit me that were, you know, in the price range that we could afford were men's Wrangler jeans. And I don't think I need to tell anybody that men's Wrangler jeans aren't exactly what a a tween is hoping to wear. (laughs) That's not the vision you have for how you want to how you want to express yourself. Um, So that was just, you know, it was challenging. I remember doing back to school shopping and, you know, my parents would take us to the mall and you know, every, like, like any parent, you want to do everything you can for your child to not like experience like pain or sadness or any of those things. Right. And so I remember Mm -hmm. going to the mall and my parents just patiently taking me from like store to store to store and just like nothing would work. And I remember the bench on the mall that I sat on and I cried (laughs) to this day. You know, I know, I know exactly where that bench was in the mall. Um, I just think I felt like I never belonged anywhere. I wasn't welcome in most stores. As I moved through my teen years, you know, like I think every girl did back then, uh, trips to the mall with my friends. And those trips for me involved a lot of waiting (laughs) because a lot of the stores that they wanted to go into, they didn't have anything that fit me. So, you know, I'd kind of like casually browse and act like I was interested in the clothing or whatnot. To be clear, my girlfriends are always like, well, Lauren, what stores do you want to go into? And they were more than willing to wait with me and do the flip reverse. But I'm a people pleaser. And it was like, oh, no, I just feel like I I know that that we're only here because of me. So I couldn't, uh, I felt like I I didn't want to take that time. Um, So, you know, I want to, I will own that. I did have supportive friends. Um, That wasn't the case. It was just, I didn't want to take the time away from what was supposed to be a group experience. And I knew that I was the odd one out in that, not them. Um, So I would spend a lot of time when we went into these stores where it was clothing for them, but I would kind of browse the accessories or I'd browse footwear where my size was less relevant to what was a possibility for me, which as I got older, and now I have size 11 feet. (laughs) That's a that's a different kind of struggle. I spent a lot of time with my friends when they were browsing in those stores. And I would focus more on like the footwear or the accessories because my size was less of an issue in trying to find something that would work for me. Uh, You know, as I got older, unfortunately, I was blessed with size 11 feet, which is, uh, is still difficult to to find footwear for. Um, we had pay less shoes here in Canada, but they closed. So it, honestly, it's still a little difficult to find footwear that works, but it's it's getting better, especially, you know, gotten real good at like filtering searches online. So um, that's less of an issue these days. But, you know, and it's funny, like in preparing for today's episode, again, like I think unless you really take the moment to step back and reflect, I don't think we organically connect these dots. So one of the things that I was thinking about, how how do I like to express my style these days? And I kind of have come around to, I feel like I'm more of a, a closet staples basics kind of girl, which I know you can relate with as well, Allison. And I thought to myself, yeah, I, you know, I lean to the words, the basics, but I like to explore, be a little bit braver in my footwear or my accessories. And in putting those dots together, I thought to myself, do I actually like that? Or, or have I gone that route? Because that was the only thing available to me for so many years when I was growing up, right? I didn't have the option to 
to shop at the stores where I could explore the trends that all my friends were, my options only were shoes and accessories. So, and like, I, I honestly, I'll probably never know <laughs> because like we are, here's where we are now, but I don't know. I just feel like I did a lot of settling for a lot of years in the clothing department, uh, well into my thirties. I think there's a difference between like not having permission to explore your style versus not having any options or very limited options available to you. Um, and it's really only been in recent years, like in conversations that you and I have had where I've really made that connection of, of having these feelings and it being the root of, <clears throat> excuse me, why I've never enjoyed shopping. And that's the thing that also led me to, to finding you. I hate shopping. So it was like, I just need an easy solution. First off, I want to thank you for being so vulnerable and sharing that story with us. Um, I feel like there are probably a lot of listeners out there who really can connect with having that feeling and not, you know, feeling like shopping was for them for whatever reason. So thank you, first off. Uh, and also, I think it's really powerful to the story that you told about the charts in the math class about how as children, we just accept our bodies, right, for what they are before the world starts putting their own you know, opinions in our ears. And it's such a thing of beauty to think back to those, those innocent times. And, and I think that that's kind of that, that place we all want to get back to, right. Of, of being in that space where we just love and accept ourselves for who we are. So thank you for being brave. Did you feel like as a teen that, you know, you shared some of the struggles you had with shopping and things, but did you feel like you were able to explore your style? And did you also have any, um, rules that existed in your household around fashion or style? Yeah, I I honestly, I feel like I did have that chance. I had that opportunity. My parents were pretty laid back when it came to style. They, you know, they let my brother and I, for the most part, dress however we wanted, as long as it was sort of, you know, modest and appropriate and not offensive to anybody. <laughs> but outside of kind of those, you know, general guardrails, they, they let us wear what we wanted, um, which I'm really grateful for. You know, my mom is uh, a creative, she's an artist. My dad also has some creativity in him. Um, you know, he's done drawing and woodworking and those kind of things over the years. So I think, um, I think when you have that frame of mind, you're more open to letting other people express themselves too, because you know that you wouldn't want to be held back in those ways. Um, you know, and in terms of Growing up and and shopping, like we never had a big budget to shop for clothes, um, but we did get to do back to school shopping every year. We got to get a few things. I feel like we always like just like missed the mark on what was like actually the cool thing. I remember um, when I was younger and Adidas Gazelle sneakers were like the popular sneaker of the time. And both my brother and I ended up with these like Converse sneakers. I want to say like one star, but I don't even know if that's right. My memory is not the best. Um, and like, don't get me wrong, like Converse are still a, a good brand name, but it was just like, oh, we were so close and yet so far. And like, <laughs> I definitely got teased for my wannabe shoes, you know, but uh, you know, we did, we did the best we could with what we had. Um, I was also really into thrift store shopping as a teen. I went through what I like to call my grandpa sweater phase, like where I used to buy these terrible sweaters, but I thought I looked really cute and cool. Um, I wore a lot of like raglan sleeve, like baseball style where the, the sleeve is a different color, baseball tees and tops that I found at thrift stores that were vintage, which I don't know. I, 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 I have to believe that every generation goes through this phase where vintage is cool because I know that the kids nowadays, like they're all dressing in the 90s clothes, which is vintage to them. So I don't know. It's one of those rites of passage. Um, and I also, you know, looked uh, per your recommendation, like I looked back through some of my old photos and I can spot elements. I was really surprised by this. I spot elements of my sort of boho style in those photos, even way back then. So things like I was wearing, you know, the knockoff Birkenstock sandals. I think they were probably from Walmart. Uh, I was wearing like hemp beaded necklaces that I would make. I was wearing paisley printed bandanas, uh, sarong skirts, the printed like wraparound sarong skirts. And like, honestly, it, it felt really good to 
to see those. I, I've never, again, I've never connected those dots. I've never taken the time to reflect back in an intentional way on, on my appearance in those years. Um, so it felt really good to be able to spot those elements and just feel like this, this, this knowing, this confirmation of like, Hey, you're in the right space and, and you are doing what feels true to you now still. Um, to see that the things that I liked back then are still the same vibe that I'm drawn to today. That felt really empowering, if I'm being honest. That's awesome. That's so cool. At what age do you think you started to recognize those elements? Ooh, um, I would say probably like 15 or so, I want to say. I, like, I, I'm, I'm thinking back, like grades, grade seven and eight, grade seven was like my grandpa sweater phase. <laughs> um, grade eight. I, I went, <laughs> you were trying uh, stuff out. <laughs> you know, like we, there is no script to follow when it comes to these things. And I think it's just, it's, it really is trial and error. Like I think so many people think that there's just, oh, just do this thing and, and you'll, you'll be fine and you'll know your style. And I don't think it works that way. I think you really have to journey through it to be like, oh, I think I might like this. And then you try it and then you realize in doing it, it's the doing where the learning happens, right? And then now you know better for next time. So now, now when I go to the thrift stores, I don't focus as much on the grandpa sweaters. <laughs> I've learned my lesson. <laughs> but through that experimentation, you're right. That's really where you're learning what works for you and what doesn't. And it's such an important part of the process. And, you know, I hear from women even now that are like, I'm in my 40s and I still don't know my personal style, but that's okay because you can still experiment into that. And you know what? Maybe five years from now, your style isn't going to be the same as it, as it is today. And that's, we're constantly evolving, right? So it's, it is going to change over time too. So how that leads me to my next question. How did your style evolve as you got older? And what was Lauren wearing in her 20s? You know, I feel like my 20s is kind of where I lost my way a little bit. Um, but but I'm saying lost my way. But I think I, I think what I really mean by that is I was doing that experimentation. I can I was continuing what had kind of started in my teen years. And, and that thread was still weaving and being woven. I don't know how to say that. <laughs> um, into my twenties, it like, I, I think I was testing things out to see what felt right or not right. I think I was pretty insecure. And rather than listening to my own voice, I think I was trying to copy, um, everyone else to fit in. Again, I think we have this inclination to, oh, I can't do, I got to do what everyone else is doing, even if it doesn't feel like me. Uh, I think it's a safety thing, right? I think it's a self-preservation thing. Um, so, I mean, I'm about to age myself here, but my girlfriends and I, we watched a lot of MTV's Laguna Beach. <laughs> uh, so, you know, Kristen Cavallari and uh, Lo Bosworth and Lauren Conrad with their their Vogue internships. Um, you know, I, I knew enough not to try and bleach dye my dark hair blonde like theirs. I made those mistakes in my earlier teens, um, but I was trying to kind of mimic and copy the styles that I'd seen those girls wearing because those were the cool girls. You know, it was this California dream again that we've kind of talked about before. It just also wasn't me. And I can look back now and see that it was part of my journey. I just didn't know then that it wasn't me. But the only way for me to learn that was by discovery. So I think those are my like early 20 years. Um Later in my 20s, I also was diagnosed with an autoimmune health issue that really impacted my body. I put on a significant amount of weight in a really short amount of time. It really impacted my mental health as well. And the clothes that I wore, um, getting dressed, it, it became like a purely functional requirement. There wasn't, there, there wasn't joy in it. There wasn't creativity in it. There, there was no time or space for, you know, Hmm, does this feel like me? Because honestly, I didn't know what I felt. I didn't know who, like, I, I wasn't in the headspace. I didn't have the mental capacity to, to figure that out. Honestly, it was survival. It was, it was survival mode, right? And I think we all, again, I think we all go through those phases of survival mode where you're just trying to get through the day. And I was just, I just need clothes to put on my body so that I, <laughs> so that I'm not, what is it? Is it the, not the naked emperor, the emperor's new clothes. That's what it is. You know, I just needed to be able to to walk down the street without people pointing and laughing at me. And so it was really just about 
what, what are the basics so that I can get by? And I was working in an office job. I had a really small collection of, you know, uh, dress, dress slacks and button down shirts in, you know, I, and I would rotate through those in like black, gray, brown, like boring, basic, dark colors. Uh, I didn't want to be seen. I didn't want to stand out. I, I just needed to survive. And so really, you know, it's, it's sad to say now, but like that wasn't the time or the space where I had the capacity to explore. That was a survival mode for sure. So I think that between, you know, what I was going through with my physical health, with my mental health, um, I didn't really want to think about style. I was also, you know, in my 20s, I was still getting established as an adult. I didn't have the financial means to spend a lot on my clothing. So anytime that I would shop, uh, you know, I could tell you where the clearance section was in every single store that I went into. And what I bought became more about the price I paid for it. And instead of, did I like it? Did it feel like me? Did it fit me well? And I know in that moment in time that if I had just taken a step back and spent a little, I was going to, I was going to say spent a little more intention, which shop with intention, outfit formulas always is just showing up in every aspect of this story because it's so, it rings so true for me. But um, if I had taken the time to really stop and rather than buying what was cheap, taking the time, setting a, a goal of, hey, my wardrobe needs this and saving up for that thing, I would have been so much farther ahead <laughs> in feeling good about my appearance and my clothes and and getting dressed would have been easier. Um, but again, I just don't think I had the mental capacity at that time to think that deeply about it. It was just survival mode. Yeah. Definitely. We, we, we don't know what we don't know. That's for sure. And, and I think that a lot of us probably spent our twenties shopping the clearance racks, honestly, and not thinking through shopping with intention. And I would, I would go get a big bag of clothes from a clearance rack, you know, maybe spend three to $5 per item and bring them home and realize that I didn't, I wasn't really building a wardrobe at all. I just had a lot of stuff that didn't go with each other that didn't fit and flatter my body but was just kind of that low hanging fruit there that I, I didn't understand how to put all of that together. So I can totally relate to that. We've, we, we've, we've both been there. And I think that we have a, we've had that shared distaste of shopping <laughs> that we've talked about through the years. And that's really why, you know, the framework, having something there to follow the steps and the system to making that something that's, that's easier. And that makes more sense is, is so powerful. So how do you feel like your style journey has continued to evolve, you know, from that time forward? Yeah. So, um, you know, several things have happened since then that really turned things around. And honestly, again, as I'm reflecting, I was kind of surprised um, by a lot of the things that came to mind because a lot of them don't at first seem style related. But it's like sometimes the path that we get to go somewhere is A to B. And sometimes you make a couple pit stops along the way. So I feel like I had some really interesting pit stops along the way um, that have helped me get to where I am today. So one of those things is I stopped dyeing my hair. Um, I, again, my autoimmune disease means that I um, have or a common symptom of it. I don't know if that's the right word, but early graying of hair is a common thing with my autoimmune disease. Um, and of course, when I was in my twenties, like nobody wants to be 24 years old, 25 years old and have gray hair. <laughs> it's not the look you're going for in your twenties for most of us. Um, so I would, you know, I would do mo like most people, I would do the box dye, um, you know, and occasionally go to the salon and shell out the big bucks to get my roots done professionally. Um, but it was, it felt like just such this exercise in futility. I mean, I would dye my hair and, you know, at best two weeks later, my roots would start showing through. Um, and I just felt like, I don't know, I don't know if my hair was growing faster or what, but it got to the point where I'm like, within days, I could see my roots coming through. And I, I just, I had enough. <laughs> One day, I remember the last time that I dyed my hair, I was going on a family trip. 
I dyed my hair before we took a cruise. We, I dyed my hair before that trip. And that is the last time that I ever dyed my hair. And after that, I went to, I had a, I have this amazing friend and she's an incredible artist hairdresser. And she was the only one that did my hair for years and years and years. And I went to her and I said, I, I need help to get out of this cycle because this is insanity. <laughs> and I asked her, okay, what can we do? How, what's the process here? And I mean, she was, she, she didn't, uh, she didn't lead me astray. She let me know this is a long, painful process and you are going to want to quit many times. So if you, uh, if anybody is ever looking for an exercise in patience, uh, try try growing out your your gray hair. And I think it's really hard to do something like that um, when you know, like you still you can't just throw a ball cap on and hide for weeks or months or years or however long it takes. I had a family function on the calendar. I called up my best friend and I said, "I'm I'm about to see family members I haven't seen in years," and. I, I can't go looking like this. Like I look ridiculous. And she said, no, you are, you're doing a thing. You're in the middle of it, but be intentional with it. So, you know, don't just throw your hair back in a bun and act like it doesn't matter, but take the time, do your hair. She, I remember she specifically said, put your curls in your hair like you would if it was all the same color and just show up and like own it. And and I did. And it, to her credit, it was fine. And no one else cared. And I got through it eventually. And it took years probably I'm going to say by the to get my length all the way to my ends but I'm here now and the thing that I was not expecting was I have gotten way more compliments on my hair since I went gray than I ever did beforehand and more importantly I love my hair and I feel so much more confident in it than I ever did in those, you know, seven day windows between box dyeing my hair and when the roots would start poking through. So I know it's not for everybody. I know it's a, it's a challenging one. Um, but for me, it was totally worth it. And I feel, I feel authentically me with my gray hair. So that was definitely one of the things that shifted. If you're not watching this on YouTube, you need to go check it out because Lauren has amazing hair. And I absolutely love the advice your best friend gave you for all of us out there who are in a process, you know, who are, are you know, struggling through something. It's really just about embracing that part of your journey, too. It's not always about the destination, right? It's about embracing that journey and where you're at on it during the way. So thank you for that. Absolutely. And thank you for your kind words. <laughs> um, I think another thing that really changed things for me in my 30s, and again, this is one of those things that on the surface doesn't feel style style related, but I didn't realize how um, how much these lessons would carry over into my style journey is uh, when I was in my mid thirties, we moved houses. We um, like, we had our first home that my husband and I bought together. And as we kind of, you know, we're packing things up and we're leaving that house and I'm looking around, I'm going, gosh, everything in this house is white, tan, brown. And it was just like, there was, it felt sterile. There was no heart in it. And I remember, you know, kind of as we were wrapping up our lives in that house and I thought to myself, you know, like this next house, I really, I want it to have heart. I want it to feel comfy and cozy and safe and, and like us. And so immediately when we moved here, I, I thought, you know what, again, this is something where I need, clearly I need to learn. I need some guidance here. This is, this is not coming organically to me. So I need to take some time to learn how to do this. And I took a home decorating class that was incredibly helpful. And through that class, I learned to stop being afraid to get it wrong. One of the things um, that the teacher of that class said was like, if you paint a room and you hate it, that's okay. Like, it's okay to change your mind. The only way that you are going to know is by trying it, which again, like that circles back to what we were talking about earlier. Uh, you know, unless I had tried the grandpa sweaters, I didn't, I wouldn't have known that eventually I'm like, yeah, no, these aren't quite for me. Right. So same thing applied to paint colors. And she just really instilled this message of permission, which again, I, I hadn't thought of that ahead of time, but that is so much, again, part of your message of giving women the permission to, to explore the things that make them feel 
good that empower them that elicit that feel those feelings of confidence. So um, I learned it, I think, first with my home. And as part of that class that I was in, there was a community aspect to it. And I remember I went into that community group and I said, gosh, I have been loving this decor program. It's been so helpful for me. I I wish that there was something like this for style. I hate shopping. I just need someone to tell me what to buy so that I can just look cute and not think about this anymore. And shout out to Jenna. She knows who she is. <laughs> she was a member of that class. And she was also a member of Allison's program, Alpha Formula. So she said, oh my gosh, there is. You need to, you need to check out Allison Lombatish. This She knows what she's talking about. Um, which led me to you. And obviously my life has changed in so many ways since then, not just my style, but you've been an incredible friend and mentor to me. And um, so I, I definitely won that, that decor class gave me so much more than a home that I love. So I am eternally grateful to that class too. <laughs> <laughs> that's so awesome. So yeah, that's, that's kind of how I stepped my toes and got pointed in the direction of outfit formulas. Um, you know, in that first year or so of outfit formulas, I think like many of our members, I bought things as close to the pictured item as I could. And I think that comes back to, you don't know what your style is. You need some of those guardrails to help guide you find the way to, to test, to test things out, right? To see, hmm, this is what we're recommending. And if you need like more specifics, here's a picture example of what that could look like, right? And and so I, I see that a lot in our community. I think in the early days, a lot of people, they, they get really focused on that picture, um, which works for some people. And, and I think one of the cool things is as you get more familiar with the outfit formulas concept, you learn how to fine tune it for me, for yourself for the things that work for you. So in those early days, you know, especially if things felt really outside my comfort zone, um, I would, you know, I kind of do the cheapy version of it. So things like, I think there was leopard flats in one of the first um, formulas guides that I was participating in. And I thought to myself, oh my gosh, leopard, like, am I a person who can wear leopard? Is leopard for me? I don't know about this. And I was hesitant to spend a lot of money on it because it felt like a big investment. And I think I bought like a $5 pair of leopard flats. And I thought, well, it's only five bucks. So we'll try it. We'll see how it goes. And lo and behold, of course, I tried the leopard flats and I loved the leopard flats and I wore the leopard flats to the point that they had holes in them. And at that point I was kind of like, okay, like validated check. We know that this is a thing that can work for us. And so at that point, then I felt more comfortable going out and investing a little bit more, right? I bought a pair, a nicer pair of leopard flats from J. Crew Factory that had that, what is it? Is it mohair, calf hair? I don't know what they call it, but actually like a little bit textured. Um, and I had more confidence in my own style to know that I was comfortable making that purchase. So, and that journey honestly just kept continuing. I think, um, you know, about a year into outfit formulas is when I really started dialing on, on how to fine tune things for me. So, you know, I talked about my, my instincts growing up and leaning towards that, those boho elements. Um, and I got way better at incorporating that boho flair to the formulas. Like you are, you know, you're the designer of the guides and your classic, your style generally leads more classic, a little more preppy, which is, is perfect. Like, I mean, that's great. That's how you like to dress. But if I think one of the examples was um, like a, a floral blouse, a floral top was one of the tops. And, but the formula would just say th- something like a printed top. And I knew, I thought, oh, floral, well, I don't know if I want floral. So I would swap like a floral top for a paisley print, which paisley feels more authentically me uh, you know, and this is years later, I still have that top, I still pull it out every summer, it's perfect for, you know, like a, a little short sleeve, perfect for picnics, birthday parties, all that kind of thing. So, um, and then just also looking for ways that I can weave my own personality. in. so again, that boho flair, leaning on things like tassels and fringe, or um, ne- like natural elements, like more like leather cuff bracelets, um, 
those kind of things. So I got better at, at weaving those elements in and subbing those into the formulas. I also stopped buying things just because they were cheap. Again, like that was my, my mission in my twenties. And, uh, I am way more willing now to budget for things that I really want because I know that long term value is really going to hold up. So for example, I got a pair of Birkenstock sandals. 2015, 2016, I want to say, they've been around a good long time. And just this past year, I was kind of like, okay, they have put in their time, it's time for a refresh here. And so this spring, I'm probably going to drop another $200 on a new pair of Birkenstock sandals, but I know I'm also going to wear those for the next five, six, seven years. So I don't mind spending a little more getting that higher quality because I know without a doubt that it is going to be worth it in the long run. Um, and then I've also found way more confidence in knowing what a heck yes is for me. So one of, one of your philosophies at Outfit Formulas and your style philosophies is if it's not a heck yes, it's a no. And it's really about just like listening to your gut, paying attention, noticing, I think is like the biggest recommendation I can make is like, notice how you feel when you try something on. Um, so I was learning how to identify those heck yeses without needing validation from others. And I had a really cool experience in a change room where this, this moment just really hit home for me. I had gone into the change room in a store with a cart full of stuff and I tried on a top and I tried it on and like right away, I tried it on and I turn and I look in the mirror and right away my hand with it, like this was just organically happened. My hand goes to my hip and I looked in the mirror and I went, oh yes, girl. Like, first of all, who is she? In that moment, it was so clear to me. I felt good in this piece of clothing, right? And so I'm like, all right, take this off. This one's coming home with me. And the next article that I pulled from the cart, I put it on and immediately I started like, just kind of like fidgeting with it and tugging and trying to get it feeling right. And I remember I, I was, I reached into my purse and I was going for my phone because I thought, I don't know about this. I'm going to take a picture and send it to my girlfriend, send it in the group chat, right? The group chat, we all, we all rely on our group chats. So I thought I'm going to take this picture and I'll send it in the group chat and see what the girls think. And I pulled out my phone, I opened the camera app and I I went to take the picture and I thought to myself, no, like within two minutes, I had that experience of, oh, this is a winner. And this other thing is not, something's not hitting here. And so I didn't even take the picture. I like, I just put my phone down and I, I knew in that moment, I was like, my my new test has now become if I feel the need to take a picture and get somebody else's opinion on this, it's not a heck yes for me. I will know when my heck yes is there, right? Like it will be obvious to me. It's not something that I need a second confirmation on anymore. And I know that that would not have happened without going through all of those journeys over the years, right? Of trying different things out and seeing what worked and what didn't. And honestly, I also don't think if those change, if that change room try on had happened in the opposite order, I don't know that I would have noticed. I think it was really powerful that the heck yes happened first. And then the mm, not so much happened second, because if it had been the other way around, I don't think that I would have um, had that powerful moment. Whew, that was powerful. <laughs> Oh my God, there's so many nuggets in there. So many good things. Wow. Yes. 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 If you have to send the picture to someone else, then that's kind of your confirmation, right? You know, just really trusting those instincts and knowing what's lighting you up when you see it. And those are the things you're going to want to wear when you get home. Those are the things that aren't going to hang in your closet with the tag still on them. You're going to be excited to wear those over and over again, just like your paisley blouse. I love that you're willing to make those substitutions that work for you. And, and you knew that that Paisley blouse was something you loved. And that's why you're, you know, wearing it all these years later. I love what you shared about not being afraid to try something that's maybe outside of your comfort zone, like the leopard shoes. And then, 
you know, making that smaller investment, realizing, oh, wait, no, I do love this trend. Like I, I'm willing to invest in this now and, and, and upgrade it to the different version that's going to last longer or be higher quality or whatever. So yeah, so many, so many good things in there. Thank you so much for that. So I have to know with learning all of these things, all of the wisdom that you've acquired, the ways that you've gotten to know yourself better, where do you feel like you're currently at with your wardrobe and your confidence? Yeah, again, I think I I just have a lot more um, like self-confidence in the decisions that I'm making these days. I am, you know, I feel like everybody is out there. Like, I, I mean, I think about my TikTok viewing experience, right? And I'll be scrolling through TikTok and I'll see a video that says, oh, here are the six things that are out now. And, you know, three videos later, I'm seeing another TikTok that says, here's five ways to wear one of those things that was out according to the video three videos ago. I'm more in tuned with paying attention to what works for me instead of the voices <laughs> of everybody else that are coming through. Um not that I like, you know, I think there's value in people sharing what is working for them. But I think that's the I think that's the tidbit that people miss a lot is it's like somebody will say something and it's like the assumption that that's gospel and it's not right. Like I, I'm i more of this frame of mind of let's take what works for you, leave what doesn't. And if someone's just sharing what worked for them, that's OK. They aren't saying that these are exactly the things that are going to work for you either. So I just think that for every rule that is out there, somebody is breaking it beautifully. <laughs> I don't know if I'm, am I allowed to do, to do this? Am I going to get in trouble? But one of, one of your rules, can I break one of your rules a little bit, Allison? <laughs> Absolutely, please. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things that I have heard you say and, and mention, and again, this can be true for a lot of women, but um, that a lot of women, as they get older, they wear oversized baggy clothing because it feels safer, right? I think especially as we age, we feel maybe, you know, with all the changes in our body, we have a little bit less confidence. So one of the ways that we try and like combat that is we skew towards wearing oversized clothes to try and hide or cover up. One of the recent topics of discussion in the Outfit Formulas Closet Crew community has been identifying your style words. And I just have thought this has been really interesting, like just kind of honing in on what are the words that really resonate you as you think about your style and the clothing you like to wear, how you want to show up. And so for me, like boho is one of those words. Edgy is one of those words. One of the words that I still think about, which honestly, I, I feel like it's passe now, but hipster is one of the words that I like to look for with style, but I feel like that's not very current. So if you're if you're listening to this or watching this and you can give me an updated phrase that I can look for when instead of hipster, please do clue me in, let me know. I think granola girl is one of the things that I've seen mentioned online, but I'm all ears, all ears on that. Um, but I've been, you know, doing this Pinterest deep dive on sort of these style keywords. And when I do a deep dive, I'll look for an outfit and the outfit will come up and then if you scroll on your screen more, like it shows you similar outfits, right? And so that's when I get like real deep in Pinterest and I start going like layers deep. And a phrase came up, it's a German term called Lagen look, L-A-G-E-N-L-O-O-K. And it means layered look. And it's apparently a very popular way of dressing in Europe. I'd never seen anybody dressing like this before. and immediately I went, oh, this is it. Like I connect with this. So I don't know, like head to toe, it is it is a very like stylized look. I don't know that head to toe that look is for me, but there are elements of that style that really appeal to me. So now when I think about my style and the words that I'm looking for, the words that I use when I'm looking for style inspiration, log and look is one of those terms. And and really that, I mean, if you look up log and look, they're very like oversized layered and clothing specifically designed to layer so that like asymmetrical hems so that you can see these multiple layers in the pieces, um, which goes completely against your recommendation of not wearing oversized baggy clothes because they feel safer. So this is one of those cases where I'm like, I'm going to, I'm going to break that rule and hopefully beautifully, I'm going to do my best. But I think of in my closet, I've got this long um, blue sleeveless vest that I like to wear. I like to layer it over my outfit in the summer with my linen pants or in a, in a tank top kind of thing. 
and it's it's oversized and it's baggy but I feel really good when I wear it. So I'm going to, I'm going to break that rule and hope that I get a pass on that one. <laughs> I give you full permission. I, all right. I'm going to be Googling, Googling leg and look as soon as we're done here. I got to see this. Now I think, I think you really hit on something important here. First off is that you have to dress in what makes you feel confident. Right. And, and I think that, you know, even when I talk about the oversized baggy clothes, feeling safer as we get older, I think that's something that women start to do not because it makes them feel more confident, but because it makes them feel safer in a sense. And really, if, if you're exploring that as a style preference, and that's something that makes you feel great when you look in the mirror, I'm, I've seen really, really, I, I know what you're talking about. And I've seen this done really, really well. So I'm excited to watch your style journey, like transform and you start to experiment more with this and, and inspire others in doing so. Well, thank you. Thank you for that permission. I think what you're dialing in on there is it's really the intent behind the choice, right? So choosing to wear it because I know that that's a heck yes, that's what feels good, that feels like me, versus choosing to wear it because it feels like, ooh, I can't show up as me or this is safer. And those are two very different intentions and, and decisions behind making that choice. So that's a really good distinction. Thank you for, for sharing that. Um, otherwise, currently, again, like not shopping has never been my problem. I hate shopping. My issue has always been that I never know what to buy. So whenever I do bite the bullet to go ahead and actually ugh, dreadedly head to the mall, which I can't think of anything, and there's nothing I would rather not do than go to the mall. It's the worst. <laughs> it is the worst. But I have found, you know, I, I mostly do online shopping these days, like so many of us. But when I do take the time to do the shopping, having that framework really has made all the difference. Um, having other formulas to follow has allowed me to build my staples over the years. And I've, you know, I mentioned a little bit earlier, I've kind of discovered that I am more of a staples focused girl than trends. I pick up a couple trends that that speak to me, but I really don't shop a lot. And when I do shop, it's with intention. So again, I've got a list on my phone. Um, I keep a running list of things I want to buy. So right now that list looks like uh, a white t-shirt because it doesn't matter what I do, how careful I try to be, I will stain every single white t-shirt that I buy. And I'm just accepting that reality. And I just allow my, I basically know, okay, two to three times a year, Lauren, you are going to buy a new white t-shirt. And I'm okay with that. And I know that that is how it's going to be. So I purposely, this is going to sound backwards. I purposely don't invest in a high quality or in an expensive one because I know that with me, it ain't going to stick around. <laughs> it's not worth the investment. A long sleeve Henley top is on my list right now. I have a kind of a burnt orange one. I think it was from one of our fall outfit formulas guides that I really love wearing, but I don't know, the burnt orange color for me doesn't feel quite right in the middle of January. So I, I know that I like that style, but I, I know that I want it in more colors. So like you were saying earlier, when you find something that works, get it in multiple colors. So um, I am looking for a, that long sleeve Henley top in a white, in an olive, in uh, deep, I'm a winter season. So deep winter colors, I think would be really helpful to increase the functionality of my wardrobe. Um, I just did a closet clean out recently. So I've got an olive tunic shirt that I noticed was a little bit pilly. So I've got one of those razor things and I'm going to try and, and, you know, defuzz it. But if that doesn't work well, I've already put it on my list. So I know to keep an eye out for that because I know that that is something that I gravitate towards and use often in my wardrobe. And a neutral cardigan with fringe or boho detail. So again, I had, um, I had a cardigan that had fringe on the bottom of it and I wore it so much to the point that I actually had holes coming in on it on around the sleeve. So it's one of those pieces where it really broke my heart to let it go, but I knew that it was time. And now I am, it's on my list intentionally so that either, you know, as my time or my budget allows, I know what to look for. And so just having that list really keeps me focused whenever I do get that itch to shop, or if I need some motivation to save up on something that maybe is a higher quality item or something I want to have on from my wish list, I've got goals in mind, you know, when, when I am ready to take that leap. So that's been super helpful. 
So I do have a little bit of a confession to share with you. Um, one of the things that I have been doing over the couple of years of doing outfit formulas now is I kind of have my own list. Again, this is something I keep on my phone of my own style notes or lessons. So those takeaways that I have learned over the years um, and, and they help keep me on track when I'm shopping. It is so easy to get distracted by all the options in the stores. And I want to really avoid those missteps as much as possible. So my list includes notes like no crew neck sweaters, look for V-necks, your heart loves ponchos, your frame does not, look for boho details like fringe, leather, prints, and layers, uh, bell sleeves and puff sleeves are not your friend, red and blue look great on you, uh, you are not comfortable in heels, do not buy them, and my sleeves have to be push upable or, and ideally stay up. Um, I do have like a little hack. I use, this is like <laughs> so silly, but I use elastic bands and I'll just use those to push my sleeves up and it holds them in place. Um, again, these are, these are my notes. There is nothing wrong with crew neck sweaters. There is nothing wrong with ponchos. There's nothing wrong with puff sleeves. I know you, Allison, you love your puff sleeves. I just know that those are pieces that are not right for me. They don't feel like me. And so if I can stop those from even making their way into my closet, I am so much further ahead in the long run. We all need to take a lesson from you. All right, everybody pull out your phone right now and start your own list of style rules. Seriously, that is so good. And it really does just kind of keep you on the rails when you're out in the store because we all get distracted by the bright, shiny objects, right? A hundred percent. This is this is not a beginning of your journey thing. And I think that's really important for people to hear today too, is the words that I am sharing today are, I've been doing outfit formulas for seven years. So this, there's a lot of, a lot of learning that has happened. And if you are new to this journey, it's okay to get it wrong. I am so <laughs> encouraging of getting it wrong because that's how you learn. And I only learned about puff sleeves not working for me and hating it when I cannot push my sleeves up. I learned that because I had pieces that were those things in my closet. And the frustration I felt when I would wear those things or try to style them, eventually I was like, I need to, I need to start making notes because I don't want to make this mistake again. And you will learn, everyone on their own journey, they will learn what those true things are for them. There's a lot of power in that, I think. Mm, so much so. And then that brings us to today. And honestly, I mean, I, I like you, I work from home. I prefer what we call soft pants. I don't know if you saw this during the pandemic online, the soft pants versus hard pants. I usually wear soft pants when I'm at home. So I like my joggers. I like my leggings. I want to be comfortable. And it's interesting. Again, I was recently reflecting on why do I have this preference when I'm at home? And one of the realizations I made was right now I only have one pair of jeans that I can wear in the winter. And again, I'm in Canada, so I've got other jeans, but they're more distressed or destructed. They're more open, which when it's minus 35 degrees Celsius is not an option. <laughs> I only had one pair of jeans that I could wear in the winter and they're too stunk for me right now. Like they don't fit, they're not comfortable. So of course I'm not drawn or want to put those on when I'm at home because who wants to be uncomfortable all day? So I did the thing, I ordered... 10 pairs of jeans in two different sizes. <laughs> and I sized up to the pair that would fit me right now. Um, honestly, I think I'm kind of between sizes, which is frustrating. But I knew that I needed to give myself that grace. I'm like, I need something I can wear today. And I'm wearing those one of those pairs of jeans right now. Uh, I told my husband, he laughed. I said, honey, I just ordered 10 pairs of jeans. And he just looked at me and he goes, that's all right. I know how you shop, which means I order the 10 pairs of jeans. I tried them all on and he knew that at most two, maybe three of those pairs would end up staying here and most of them would be going back. And he was right. I kept two and I sent the rest of them all back. Now I have something to wear. Now I have those options. So I feel good in what I wear, what I want to put on every day. And then of course, I always have my outfit formulas to give me that inspiration. Anytime that I get stuck on what to wear, anytime when I start to realize, hmm, my closet isn't working for me anymore. I can really look back to those foundation elements of outfit formulas, which is my closet staples. Like that is my sweet spot. That is where I, I really like to focus my attention and energy. So if I feel like I'm getting frustrated by my wardrobe, I know exactly where to lean to, 
to get back on track. And that has been so incredibly helpful in this entire journey. So thank you for that. Wow. Wow. Thank you for trusting us with your story and for sharing all of these nuggets of wisdom, this heartfelt conversation. Thank you for being vulnerable. Thank you for trusting us. I appreciate it so much. Well, thank you, Allison. I always love chatting with you and I am looking forward to doing more of that in future episodes of the show. Likewise. And I would love to hear your thoughts about today's episode. Did you connect with any of the experiences that Lauren shared in her story? Have you had those years when you felt lost in your style? And if so, what helped you find your way back? Did a tidbit from today's episode resonate with you? Did you learn anything new? Let's open a dialogue and connect. You can find me on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and YouTube as Allison Lombatis, and I'd love to hear from you. If you share thoughts about your own style story or photos of your outfits growing up on your social media, please tag me. I'd love to see them and I'd love to cheer you on. Remember, you are worthy. Style is a skill anyone can learn and closet contentment is possible. I believe in you. Thanks for tuning in.